Welcome back everyone. This week, we're going to be making a tree. Hi everyone, so thanks for coming back. Uh, if this is your first video, good to have you on board. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all of that kind of stuff. If you're a returning visitor, Good to have you back. Um, it is absolutely boiling in the workshop today. I don't think the 3D printer is helping running at the minute. Um, so if I look nice and shiny and sweaty, that is why. So I'll keep this quick. Um, speaking of which, this is going to be a really quick video this week, is how I started out when I decided to make it. It ends up being another 20 minute video. I am trying to keep the editing down, but also I'm well aware that this could be somebody's first video here, so I don't want to cut out bits. Let me know in the comments if you think kind of they need to be shorter or if you're happy with the length and the detail that I go into. Um, it's always good to get that kind of feedback. Um, so this week we are going to be making a tree. I wanted um, a big old gnarly oak tree to go outside of the house that I built before, the merchant's house. Um, I think in the future what I will probably do is maybe put some chains around the tree. I need to put some moss on it and things like that. But I'll do that once I've done all the stones on the board so I know how it's all going to tie in nicely. Um, and I think I'll probably hang some um, gibbets from it when it's finished as well, um, when the board's finished. But again, I want to get a feel for how the whole board sits before I kind of put that kind of stuff in. So with that in mind, um, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you next time. So the first thing I needed to do was create um, the structure for the tree. And I wanted to build the tree in two halves um, because I don't want it to be too tall when I try and box it away. Um, and I also want to be able to take off the top part of the tree, put it back on when I get into school or when I'm playing on it. And so I had to make it in two pieces. Now this is modeler's wire. I think it's 0.8 uh, millimeters um, thick. I can't remember what that is engaging. It's 20 gauge wire. Um, I cut these into short lengths. I think they're about 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters long. So I just did it by eye. Um, twisted them all together to start to make a root structure that I was happy with and that would sit on the piece of wood. Now, the wood is 2 mil ply, 3 mil ply, something like that, um, that I bought in small sheets from Amazon. Um, don't forget affiliate links in the comments below help to support the channel. Um, and that's cut to size for where it needs to go on the board. Once I'd got the roots happy enough with where they are kind of going to fit on the board, I covered it with tin foil. Now, this helps to bulk it out, um, so you don't need as much um, polymer clay in a bit. Now, the problem is this is not the best tin foil. This was cheap, um, kind of pound shop tin foil that didn't really keep its shape. It kept falling off it wasn't the best it kept breaking it did the job um but if you are going to use it use kind of semi good quality tin foil i probably wouldn't bother in the future i probably just use more um polymer clay um but this just helped to book it out but it also means that if any of the polymer clay kind of chips off or anything like that it's not going to be bare wire to stab a child in the finger when they're playing with it um so this is Sculpey. Um, I use Sculpey Grey because that's all I could get. It was the cheapest and it doesn't matter because it's going to be painted. I put it on in small strips. It allowed it, it just made it a little bit easier to work with than trying to put a big sheet over it. And I didn't bother about blending it together at this point. Um, it was just a case of getting it onto the model, getting everywhere covered. Um, and then once it is covered like this, I can start to then blend the seams together. I started with my fingers just to get the biggest seams done. Um, and that was fine, um, you know, leaves fingerprints and things like that, but by the end they're all gone. This is just to really close the big gaps. Um, my clay working tools, now I, I don't, I've never worked really with um, modelling, like this kind of modelling clay to this degree before, so I don't know if just my tools were a bit cheap, um, because they were cheap, but they, like the rubber nibs on them started to fall out, um, they weren't the best. Uh, maybe if I spent more money on them, got professional grade tools, they would be better. But they did the job. Uh, they, they were just a little bit awkward to work with, um, which is why I started doing this kind of stuff by hand, really, to begin with, because trying to do it like this with the blue stuff, I mean, you can see that it's starting to, to pop out and fall out. Um, so again, I don't know if it's just their cheap tools. When it comes to the finer detail work later... Um, they're absolutely fine and, and they're okay. Maybe my you know clay was too stiff. It was quite a cold room. 
Um, I had worked it in my fingers for a bit, but maybe, you know, if I'd been in a hotter room, it, it would have been a little bit easier. But once it got to this point, um, you see, it starts to blend together nicely. The whole thing, this whole base probably took me about an hour, um, an hour and a half to, to kind of model and carve and and sculpt. The hardest part was the top of the trunk. And, it, you know, to be fair, it would have worked as just a chopped down tree. That would have been absolutely fine. But I wanted the height... Uh, like I said in the intro to the video, I wanted to be able to hang things from the tree, like gibbets and things like that. Is it gibbet or gibbet? Yeah, gibbet. I'm pretty sure it's gibbet. Um, I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments if it's different. Um, but the beauty of working like this was that it didn't really matter about the size of the top of the trunk because I'm going to build the second half once this is baked and, and join it together with some pins. Um, so that it can separate. But this was just a case of really trying to make sure there are no gaps. You can see there that um, underneath just there, some of the tin foil has started to show through. I'd gone a little bit thin with the clay, so putting a little bit more on. And that is the beauty of this kind of stuff. And the, the other good thing that I like about this kind of modeling clay, um, the polymer clay, is that it, you can bake it several times, which is what I end up doing um, with the upper part of the tree. Um, and I'll explain that when we get to there. So you can make it, it's kind of like a save function. So you make to a certain degree, bake it, and then you can add bits to it and bake it again, and it's absolutely fine. Um, I couldn't bake this a second time when I kind of had some ideas because I'd already stuck um, foam bricks onto the base and everything like that. This is me trying to create some kind of line work with that, and some really didn't really work, so I went for the um, ball tips on there. And I mix this up between the bigger tips and the smaller tips, and kind of you can see they're great putting all the grain into the wood. Uh, I used a fine, like a nice brush, just to brush it all off. Um, and so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I wanted to add some knots where maybe branches or roots have been and they've been kind of fallen off. Um, started to do that with just some thin sausages of of the comp of the polymer clay and that was really i was really impressed actually with how easy that was to do. i was worried it might ruin it worried it wouldn't work very well um but i think hopefully you'll agree when you kind of see it painted up and finished at the end it worked really well um and it was just a case of smoothing it out and and working on the joins making sure it all kind of blends in and leaving it smooth on the inside but it you know quite fun it's quite therapeutic i was surprised how much i enjoyed doing this i thought it would be a lot more frustrating than it was i think if i get proper tools then even better um putting some metal pins in now here i put two pins in and bake it in the end i end up drilling two extra holes to give it four pins because it, it still pivots slightly on two pins i wasn't happy with how strong it was um for the top half yeah so i put four pins in build the top half and then i add, end up add, adding a lip as well to the top half um, just to make it kind of smoother. So once it was baked, I glued it down onto the wood using um, Uhu glue, just because I like that for sticking stuff down like this. It's really, really strong. Um, I find it a lot stronger than um, super glue, but it, it also sets relatively quickly, holds in place. Um, it's, I just I like Uhu glue for that kind of stuff. And this is using modeling compound to build up the earth around the roots and then sticking in some cobblestone squares i thought about using bricks but they didn't i couldn't get a pattern that i was happy with going left to right forwards to backwards whatever um and what i wanted the whole point of this is i wanted a tree that had been planted in this little square that's left in between some nice cobblestones and as the city's kind of gone to rack and ruin this tree has grown and it's exploded out of it and it's pushed all the cobblestones away and it's really just breaking out of its kind of roots before it's then died in the long winter, um, which is part of the narrative that I've built up around it. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to be working on a kind of tabletop RPG to go with all of these boards as well. So I'm kind of building these with a Mordheim idea, but I'm also going to write, if anyone's familiar with the Morkborg um, kind of system, um, things like Forbidden Psalms, I'm going to be building a game book to go along that kind of thing. So once that was set and I'd got the base, I then started on the top half of the tree. Again, um, modelling wire, I think there's about 20 pieces of 30 centimetre long wire there. Um, I twisted them together to make the trunk. And the good stuff about the good thing about this modelling wire is you can just branch it off like this. And um, there's loads of videos on YouTube that kind of go through it as well. I just kind of watched a load of those, saw how people did it. Um, 
and this yeah it just works nicely um gives it a lot of strength is what i'm hoping with this inside it shouldn't snap the last tree i built for the arena video i built using actual branches and actual kind of sticks and it looked great um i think anyway but it it's it's quite fragile there's a couple of branches that have been broken off when kids inevitably try and put figures into the trees um and rest them on it and the branches break and snap and then have to be reattached or kind of pulled off and, and the tree ends up a bit bare i'm hoping with this with the um, kind of wire in the middle at the very least even if the clay snaps the wire will obviously hold so i'll be able to glue it back together or i'll be able to repair it with kind of thicker clay around the join and you know it'll just end up looking more gnarled and and everything like that so this is just a case of going by eye really i'd got an idea of where it needed to lean um so that it leaned away from the buildings and it leaned over the canal um because it's getting a bit compact on there with the big merchants building i didn't want it to be too close i don't want it to be leaning into the building so i had an idea of where the trunk needed to lean but the branches themselves were just a case of just going by i just kind of thinking right what would be cool and i end up cutting some of them off anyway when it comes to the the um adding the clay because it just looks a bit clunky um and it just yeah it looked a bit manic and you know i'll be perfectly honest i got a bit fed up of kind of um putting the, the polymer clay around the branches and uh, was making my fingers really hurt um so i just didn't bother I just cut off the branches and that's the beauty of doing something like this you can kind of Go with what you want, what you like, um, and what works for you, really, and kind of get the aesthetic. And again, like I say, because you can kind of add to it afterwards, if you wanted to, you could pin other branches. You could drill into the, the kind of finished tree and, you know, put some more of this modelling wire in, join the um, polymer clay nicely, and it would be seamless, and you just have to paint it and touch in the paint. Um, so the same as the base, started to add um, thicker layers of the clay just so that it got to the same thickness as the base um once i'd got the bottom half of the trunk to the kind of the right thickness i smoothed all of that together as you know as best i could um and gave it the, the base so that i could push it down onto the pins um to start to join it with the base where it was going to join and get those pin holes in there before it was baked um this is kind of the point where somewhere around here off camera i just decided you know what two pins is not enough um i'm going to drill it add two extra pins um using a pin drill um and start to i added an extra layer of clay as well around the bottom as a lip um, which you'll see later on but this you know this allowed me to model it and, and get the tilt and then start to cover up and the rest of the trunk and the branches and things like that. You can see with some of the branches I didn't bother with tin foil because it just kept falling off. Um, and so I just thought, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. Once the whole tree was covered, I didn't bother showing all of that because it was exactly the same as doing the base. Again, it was looking at what do trees look like? Where do they have divots? Where do they have kind of holes and indents? And it tends to be where the, the branches have branched off and split off. Um, so even here at this point I've covered all of the branches and I snip a few more off um, later on when it comes to kind of carving them and I just wasn't happy with how they looked. They looked a bit bumpy, they looked a little bit like a kid's drawing of a branch I think and I couldn't get it any thinner um, with the, the, the wire and with the tin foil. so some of them I do end up um, snipping off as well as you'll see as I go through um, but using these kind of bigger metal uh, bigger ball tipped tools to scrape out some carved kind of granular lines in there it's not just about the findings it's really trying to get some real deep gouges into the wood as well to give it that idea that it's old and you know it's been weathered it's been split probably hadn't you know been maybe been struck by lightning at some point just trying to tell a story really with it and again it just I was worried going into this that it, you know, I'd have to have a plan. I'd have to try and really think about how the the grain lines go. But actually, you you kind of your tools tend to follow the natural bumps and curves in the clay, um, where there are divots, where there are holes, and and it just follows it quite nicely. And uh, I, in the end, I just attacked it randomly, and it you know it came out looking, I think, pretty cool, pretty nice. 
I was quite happy with it. Um, switching between the big tools and the, the kind of finer tipped um, ends as well just kind of made it more random, made it easier um, to get that kind of flow down. So I started with the trunk. The hardest part actually at this point was holding it and not having my fingers blend all the details together on the bits where I'm holding that I've just carved. Um, which I had to hold it quite lightly, which is why in the end um, I ended up putting it back onto the base with the pins. Why That's kind of when I realised, okay, I'm going to need four pins for this so that I could rest the top half on it and then I could go in and, and kind of rescour, rescour, the rescore, rescour. You, you, you decide. Re, re um, kind of scrape those bits without rubbing them with my fingers. Um, using a wire brush to apply more fine detail, um, and I did all this to the trunk first, so that that was kind of done. I could experiment with different techniques before I then moved on. Um, and did exactly the same thing really on the branches and um, pushing it into the divots, giving some depths as well where the, the big trunks and uh, the big trunks, the big branches at the top of kind of separated, pushing in there, giving it a divot, maybe, you know, where a bird might nest or something like that. Um, and, and just kind of getting a feel for it, really. And the beauty of this stuff over air drying clay is that it just doesn't dry. So, you know, I, I did most of this one night. Um like the covering with clay and then came back the next day and did all of the um, kind of grain work that I'm doing now. And it was fine. You know, it was still ex exactly as workable as it was the day before. So here you can see I've added an extra layer um, of modeling clay around the bottom. Um, and that overlaps the bottom trunk. The idea was just to give it a bit more support, but I kind of went a bit thin with it. Um, some of it broke off, some of it held out. Um, I think if I did this again, which I probably will do at some point, I would find a better way to join them. Maybe I would build the whole tree as one unit, bake it, cut it in half using like a um, small hacksaw or something so you've got a nice fine blade, and then drill the pins on both sides so that it kind of is one unit that I then pin. Um, I don't know. I tried using magnets as well in between them, but I couldn't get those close enough to work. Um, it's you know it would be a work in progress. Here, just a bit like on the base, adding some extra detail. So this has been baked now. You can see where I baked it for a bit too long, and some of the branches were too close to the heat in the oven. Um, you know, with the cost of gas at the minute in the UK, I may be better to just cook it with a candle next time. Um, <laughs> something like that. But yeah, it got a bit close to the flame. Um, got a bit brown, but it don't matter. By the time it's painted, you can't tell. Um, but using those little fine sausages to add a little bit more detail around the big kind of split that I'd added there where I think a branch had probably been struck by lightning and had fallen off and kind of gouged out from the tree, kind of pulled a bit away. Um, so do that and then do the same kind of thing with another knot mark or a bit where another branch has fallen off, like I did on the trunk, uh, not the trunk, like on the roots. And just blended it all in um, so that it kind of felt like part of it. Now, this is a good thing because I'd baked it before, but here I wanted to add these details in, but I was worried about losing too much of the detail on the trunk while I was working with it with my fingers. So put it in the oven, baked it so the rest of it is rock solid. Add these bit onto it. It'd be, had these bits to it. You can see there's some lighter grey bits on the branches as well. That's where I've gone in where there were some holes and patched it up, baked it again. And it's absolutely fine. So prime the whole thing with black primer um, using the airbrush. I could have taken it outside and used a rattle can, but I hadn't mod podged the um, foam. And even though everyone keeps telling me, I know it's the um, kind of the the accelerant in the spray paint that melts the foam. And if you spray it from far enough away, you're absolutely fine. I still don't trust myself with it. And after I'd done this, I thought, you know what, I don't want to break the cobblestones, even though they end up half of them end up falling off and have to be super glued on. Once it's based um, in black I went over with several dry brushes starting with a cream um, or sorry a white at this point any white paint will do I ended up just using a cheap acrylic from the works the same white as I use for all of this kind of terrain dry brushing and I went on heavy with the white I really wanted to pick out the edges this is old wood it's like driftwood in my mind um, and even though it won't have salt on it like driftwood does I wanted those exposed highlights you know they've been bleached they've been in the the weather even though it's kind of been permanent winter for a while 
Um, so I went over the white, then just went over spots with um, a bright orange and a um, mid-tone brown. This is Dryad Bark from Citadel, which is kind of a mid to dark brown. But this was just to add some colour washes, basically, some, some spots of colour um, that will show through the oil wash that we'll do in a bit, the trusty black oil wash. Um, and I, a lot of wood that I looked at, old wood, has kind of blue tinges to it. So I went over with some of this Inca by Darkness just in the shadowy areas. I didn't do this so much on the top. It's more underneath the branches um, in areas that I thought would be dark and gloomy. Um, and again, it's just a dry brush. And then classic oil wash, which I've talked about in lots of my videos before, which is just black oil paint mixed with white spirit, um, kind of sloshed over the entire thing, and then rubbed off with kitchen towel so that it brings back those colours but it really it stains it, it darkens it it fills the cracks um, and makes it look old and weathered it looks really glossy at the minute that it dries completely matte um, it's not you know you don't keep that gloss when it's finished as you can see there so that's how it dries nice and dark and gloomy um, and at this point then I went back through and just gave it another very kind of faint um, white dry brush just to pick out some of those edges where the knots are. Um, this wasn't anywhere near as a strong a dry brush as um, the first time around. This was just to pick out where I thought the light might fall on it um, and reflect it and kind of that kind of thing. Um, so once I've done that, it's time for the big reveal. So here we go. Yeah. 